Yeah, well, he's been there before, but he hasn't done that. This lightweight contender worked exceedingly hard to get back to a championship setting, and this may be his last title shot if he doesn't get the win tonight. Yeah, you, you can't not get there twice. When you're there, you gotta win one, or you don't get the opportunity again. This guy put his head down and went right back to work from the moment he heard and still. He said that at some point, we would put the belt around his waist. He would put in the work. He would prepare. He's back here now, John. And he intends to be the champion. And when you suffer a setback, there are two ways to go. And this man went on the right trajectory. Really good to see him get back here. And now we find out if he's got the goods to be a champion. Well, Scousers don't get knocked out, and that has been the case for Patty Pimblett, at least to this point in his UFC career. Outstanding pedigree coming in, and he's got another big fight in front of him tonight, DC. And he's going to continue to get big fights, because when you have that thing, when you have that it factor about you, people want to tune in. That is what Patty Pimblett has in spades. But not only can he fight, not, I'm sorry, but not only can he draw people in, the guy can fight. He's a tremendous grappler, and he has confidence like not many guys that we've seen at such a young age in their career. And don't let the out-of-camp body composition fool you because this man has a work ethic that rivals anybody in this division. Huge spot for Patty Pimblett tonight. All right, both fighters have graced the octagon, and that means we are ready to go with live action from the Scotiabank Arena here in Toronto, where some of the best fans in all of MMA have come out to see our fights here tonight. Our tale of the take now for this lightweight championship fight. All right, now for the particulars, he is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC Lightweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, presenting the challenger, Anaka Volcano! And now, introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending UFC lightweight champion of the world, Pane the Pane! There's Herb Dean. He will handle the action inside the octagon. All right, well, it has been a rapid rise to UFC prominence for the Little Puppy and Patty the Batty Pimblet. Standing room only, capacity grabs when he fights. And as far as this matchup is concerned, a lot of people feel like he might be up against it. Pimblet does not want to hear that noise. He said, if the fight goes to the ground, I am a much more willing and able grappler than any of you realize. And of course, if the fight's on the field. I got the power and the speed advantage to put this guy away. Patty Pimblett gets the early takedown. Nice start to the round for him. Let's see what he can do with it. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. Side control now. Nicely done. All right, we'll see if he can apply pressure inside his opponent's guard here, DC. Oh, trying to pass here, but Dikembe Mutombo style, Block. he gets denied. Blocked! Great job blocking that pass by the bottom fighter. Pimblett getting work from the top here. He's got to do a better job to cover up. All right, rubber guard for him now, DC. We haven't seen you lean on this in the octagon. Yet. No, I, I can't get those <laughs> legs up there. Come on, man, look at these tree trunks. They don't go up around nobody's shoulders. I like to keep my feet on the ground, and I like to grind. That's what I'm known for. But this guy has that dexterity. He has that ability to throw up the rubber guard, 
to be in threat or position where his opponent was trying to find safety. There are many, many attacks here. Let's see which one he chooses to go after. Well, we'll see if he postures up and can get some of his ground strikes going here. Just over two minutes to go in the round. Pimblett going to work here from guard and doing a pretty good job, I might add. Always offensive, lands a shot from the bottom. Pimblett's looking to go from the full to the half guard here, opponent not having it. All right, so not enough action there on the ground. The referee brings the fight back to the feet, and we are back underway. Execution on the tee. Beautiful technique on the straight right hand. Both fighters exchange in the pocket here. Forty-five seconds to go here in round one. Able to check that kick as well. Beautiful combination there. If you are teaching an up-and-coming fighter about throwing volume strikes effectively, you can do worse than watching the film on this guy. I mean, guy it's a master class, John. It's a master class in mixing up the target, mixing up the strikes, and ending your combination with the kick. Right. Second round, straight ahead. All right, so an entertaining five minutes. Let's look back at some of the highlights, DC, and I'd imagine a lot of these replays are going to be rooted in that kicking game that was on full display. Absolutely. You're going to see a lot of different techniques, but the kicking was the key to him getting ahead in this fight. He's out ahead now. He needs to stay the course and continue to do that as the fight goes on. You ready to fight? Ready. Good. Second round underway. All right, DC's back from the can as we get this next round underway, and his striking in that previous round was so good. I got tired just watching that. I mean, he did a great job of landing strikes, but not only just punching. Oh, what a connection by him there. His opponent could be out of here soon, DC. He's almost done. You can hit with a shot like that. You don't know what time, grab or wrestle. He's a, he, I mean, he's confused. He's as confused as he was on his first test. Now. He's got a good leg kick, there it is. Tries to work it into a takedown. <laughs> Whiffs on the straight right hand. All right, different round, but same approach out of the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighter. I'm not sure if there is an injury, but his ground game is so strong, he hasn't made any effort to take the fight, though. I don't understand when you possess that skill, when you're so good on the ground, so strong in positions, he does such a great job of finding submissions, I don't know why he wouldn't spend the vast majority of the fight there. Tonight, he is fighting a very confusing style of fight, and I just don't get it. Moicano gets up. He is back on the feet here. All right, they separate now. We'll see who can get off in space. Oh, he's stuck in the guillotine. That guillotine is very tight. Oh, he is out. How good is that? That is phenomenal submission defense by this young man. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Oh, he's got the Kimura position locked in now. You gotta be kidding me. He gets out of danger again. Once again, he gets his arm out. Great submission defense. Pimblett getting worked here from the top. Ground and pound strikes raining down. While sometimes our stat guys are stingy with these submission attempt numbers, there have been a lot of them here. Submission defense has held up every step of the way. Yeah, he's a great grappler, and he's really, really good defensively because he is so aware of all situations when he's on the ground. He has done an amazing job staying out of those submissions. All right, 45 seconds now to go in the round. All right, north-south position now. We'll see who transitions first. And 
busy as he looks to improve position here. All right, he's sort of hanging out here unguarded, DC. Not sure if he's trying to bait him in or what, but not great body language here. All right, round three coming up next. All right, heading back to the corner, and Moicano's bleeding from the forehead there a little bit. It doesn't appear to be too bad. The focus for the cut man, though, to make sure that he can stop the bleeding and not allow the blood to get into the eyes. Well, if you like blood, maybe this is the fight for you because blood has really become a factor, and it's a cut that appears to be right above his eye. That's one of the worst spots for you to get a cut because then the blood starts to come down and it goes into the eye. It's difficult already to see, but when you got one of the best mixed martial artists in the world targeting it, it becomes impossible. They call that the trickle-down effect. Ready That's fight. what that is? That's right. Ready. <laughs> Round three of a possible five. Finds his range with the jet. Oh, looking to land the leg kick. That one checked. Big knee there. Oh, he landed another great shot to the body there. Really starting to connect at a high percentage now in the latter stages of this fight. Oh, side kick. Well timed there. Another body kick land. Great block there. He did a really good job of getting on that high crotch and just following the action. Well, he's got his back now. Trying to pass the guard here, but a nice job by the bottom fighter defensively. Bottom fighter did a fantastic job of following with his hips, making sure he blocked any attempt to get past his guard. Oh, seamless transition to half guard there. Unbelievable how quickly he was able to slice that leg through to get to the half guard. A lot of top pressure being applied here. Most fighters will tell you offensive wrestling is the hardest, most exhausting thing. Especially if you're just running the guy over, John, and then he just gets up. Landing strikes nicely here from top position. Pretty good work with the strikes here off of his back by Moicano. Oh, his ground and pound is on full display here tonight. All right, try to pass here. As Glover Teixeira might say, not today. Not today. Great job of following with the hips, keeping those legs locked and keeping them in full guard. Pimblet's pass is denied. Big right hook there by the champ. Showing off that leg dexterity and flexibility rubber guard now. I mean, it's unbelievable to watch these guys who are able to bring the legs all the way up around the shoulders and just control you. Because to me personally, and I'm no jujitsu expert, to me personally, it feels like this is a position to really just slow everything down. Are there submissions? Yes. But the ideal thing in this position is to slow you down from damaging and really just make you feel more in danger than you really are. All right, now we take a look back at some of the action in that previous round, DC. A lot to like on both sides, really. I mean, both were intent on going forward. And what happens when nobody wants to take a step back? They meet in the middle. That's exactly what they did, and they both found success over the course of that round. You ready to fight? Ready. Let's do it. We have arrived at the fourth round fight schedule for five five-minute rounds.
All right, so here we go. Fourth round is underway. What is the fighter's mentality when you enter the world's seminal championship rings? You understand that you are getting close now. The night is almost over. The goal is within reach now. 15 minutes down, 10 to go. You tell yourself you can do anything for 10 minutes. Pimblet's back in half guard. He's very comfortable here. Just because he got taken down doesn't mean he ain't gonna punch. Lands a beautiful strike from the bottom. All right, great position for him here. He's got the full mount. See if he can get that ground and pound going. Oh, he's got to get it going, but he can't rush. A lot of times, guys get in the full mount and they rush, they get nervous. They're like, oh my goodness, I'm winning. The reality is, you're winning, but it can change in a matter of seconds because then they can be gone. He's got to drop his hips, be really heavy at the opponent's base, and then just start to work. Make the opponent give his back. Oh, he's got a choke. Oh, tense moment here. That arm triangle's tight. Submission defense wins this transition. All right, half guard position here, DC. You have an extra hop in your step when you talk about fighters working out of this half guard. Oh, man. I like half guard as a top fighter. I understand half guard as a bottom fighter. Don't want to be there. It's right. very dangerous. But if you are there, you have to be winning the position of the underhook. It opens up so many opportunities for you to either escape or sweep. Yep, got to be very careful there. Give me that wrist control. Let's go. Great submission defense. Good work. Come on. One minute left. Get back in this fight. In the half guard. And they're not glancing blows. When he's throwing, he is landing so clean that his head is stunning off the mat. Working out of the half guard here. He's in a dominant position. Look at him attacking the wrist. Oh, he's got the Kimura locked in. You gotta be kidding me. How did he get out? He just stayed calm. He's able to withstand the fire. Now he finds himself out and safe. playing in his guard. I want you to pass his guard. I want you to get full side control position. He has no answer for you from side control. All right, so that's the end of the round. A lot of highlights from which to choose, but his success in that round certainly rooted in his offensive takedown game. And that's what he does, right? He's a grinder. He's the type of guy that wants to get a hold of you, drag you to the floor, it doesn't bother him that much if you get back to your feet. You he just wants to continue you to ready? make you work the you entire ready? time because he understands this type of crime most guys can't keep up with. Good job defensively to block that punch. Looking for that left hand, just out of range though with it. You cannot take those leg kicks clean like that. job by him defensively there. All right, well, I don't have to be a judge to tell you he is losing this fight late in the game now. Time to start throwing up those submission attempts, I would think. 
got to keep going. You got to start throwing up submission attempt after submission attempt and hope that something's free for you to latch on to. Looking to land the right just out of range. Clipped him with the right hand there. Two minutes and counting to go in this fight. Oh, and there's a kick down the body. That one blocked. Oh, picture perfect shot there, DC. And one more of those, he might be out. I mean, the fight is going to be over. I can't believe he's still standing. That shot made the perfect. His strike attempt there is blocked. One minute to go in the fight. Oh, judges had to like that uppercut. Well, this is exactly the sense of urgency you're looking for. Try to take the judges out of it. He is lighting them up now. Trying to guard pass here, you not to today. No. And there is the final horn. What a 25-minute affair tonight. We're going to the scorecards. Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score the contest. 48-48. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a unanimous draw. All right, so there he is, the still UFC lightweight champion of the world. A lot of steam here during fight week that maybe there were a few things that could plague him tonight. Looked as good as ever for my money. He looked as good as he's ever looked inside the octagon. He's so good at everything, every single skill that you need to become champ. He has mastered, and he showed it.